Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Blair. And I'm Kirsten. And we are Mediocre Content. content. Oh, crap. I should have said Mediocre Content. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's what I should have said. Hi, Nat. <laughs> I feel like I, I almost forgot to tell you. My Girl Scout cookie order shipped. Mine did too. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. Because when we were going over the schedule for the next upcoming streams, I don't think we included the Girl Scout one because we weren't really sure. Yes, that's true. But we need to figure out a date for that. Yeah, I'm thinking, well, if it's shipped already, we could even do an impromptu, perhaps, um, the week that it comes in and just be Ooh. like, this is what we're doing. That's cool. Um, do I that. would just have to wrangle the husband um, and we probably couldn't do it on a Thursday because he has class on Thursday. Okay. So it'd have to be like a special. <clears throat> a special. Well, we can do that. Yes. A maybe. Sure. Special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be good. Uh, hope everybody's well. It says that I'm unstable. So that's pretty accurate and also <laughs> terrible news. I was like, what else is new? <laughs> what else is new? It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty normal for me. Um, hope you're doing well, Nat. Good to see ya. Happy Tours Day. Yes. Happy first day of the Masters tournament if you're into golf. I just have to ob obligatory put that out there for everyone. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's just, it's like knowledge that I've absorbed sure. by being married to Chris. Ah. That's all. That's acceptable, I guess. Yeah. Ew. Okay. Well, anyway. I, you know, it's just, golf. it's like passive. So I thought I would just share with the class. <laughs> that's, that's all. With the class. <laughs> Welcome to class. It's just us and Nat, and that's it. it I am just the class. Unstable. We're all unstable, Nat. There, yes. There's no getting around that. Um, let's see if this plays. It does. Okay, so there's going to be Exciting. saloon music playing in the background because... We have a theme. We today. do. We have a very big theme, which explains my plaid. Mm -hmm. um, today, we're going to be talking about the lineage of cute little nanays and also about american <laughs> cowboys and uh cool sounds pretty fun uh as usual we have a super lovely presentation uh and that I, kirsten created all by herself i i did i mm -hmm. i did i dude well talking is going to be fun today anyway uh, yeah would you we love talking <laughs> well, go sorry and disclaim i guess <laughs> let me just take a sip of my spicy diet coke here. Hey, you're fine i should actually let's do our thingies nice try nat um we'll do our little things real quick oh yes too. we'll do the things uh we're 49 percent mediocre uh we are two stars good noodle Ugh. um we're a nine on the freshness scale. I haven't even showered yet. <laughs> I did shower today. Thank you very much. You are carrying the weight because of our I freshness. did go to hot. I did go to <laughs> hot yoga and I was disgusting. So it could have gone very differently today for everyone. Disgusting. And then what was? What's our other? Oh, smarts. That's a great question. <laughs> I know. Oh, we're only thirty percent smarty pants. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, great. that explains it. All is well. Okay. Well. We'll just claim it. I, the fact that our thirty percent is smarty pants says a lot about why we in, in, need to disclaim at all times. Yes, I would argue. Yes. yes. So anyway, yes. feel free. So anyway, this is this is the disclaimer. I have small words in my brain. <laughs> um, we are not experts on anything. Kirsten did ride horses as a child. I did. Slash adult. And um, so she knows a lot about horses. I don't know as much. But we are, you know, we're just, yeah. we're out here to like learn along with you guys and if, and contribute to the conversation. Mm -hmm. This is fun compared to the audio only podcast because you can tell us that we're wrong in real time. <laughs> it's very true. My mom said I so. needed to put pictures of me on the horses for this pod, but the answer is no. <laughs> Ah, you, we missed an opportunity, you guys. It sure I would love that. Big Kirsten's no. first pony ride. <laughs> Horrifying. Also, hello, Abby. Nice to see you. Sorry about. Oh my god, one star now. That's so embarrassing. Anyway, Ugh. um, with that disclaimer, we'll jump into the good news. And the good um, news. Jinx is just in time. Aww. Also, ah. everybody, just. Beware, he is naked. He does not have his collar on today. <laughs> oh, 
So just, <laughs> Look you at know, everyone calm head. down. It's fine. It's okay. Oh, I just showed Blair a TikTok of this cute little cat <laughs> with this voiceover. And he goes, oh, yeah, everybody, look at my fancy butthole. <laughs> look at my fancy butthole. <laughs> That's what Jinx does the whole time he's here. <laughs> yes. yes, always, always. the butt. Exactly. Always. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. He just right. wants everybody to see it. <laughs> look at my fancy butthole. You're so fancy. You got a fancy butthole. Oh, my gosh. I have to segue really quickly as well. Do you sure. remember those ads or commercials or whatever they were for the twinkle tushes? <laughs> no. They were things what? that you could put on your animals. Oh, animal. yes. Oh, yes. I do know what those are. They're like the little gemstones. <laughs> that, like, thing. <laughs> it's like a butt ornament. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For kids. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> it's my butthole. <laughs> that used to crack me up. I was like, that is, first of all, ew. Second of all, <laughs> first of all, how are they going to go to the bathroom in a clean and efficient manner? I am not touching that thing. If they no. go in the litter box with that thing on, it'll never no. come off. I'm not touching it's, it. No, it's permanent. I'm it's a permanent eating. ornament. Yep, yep. I also <sighs> feel like my cats wouldn't like it, even if I put right? it on. Like, whose cat is enjoying that? No I don't one. understand. Literally no one. <laughs> oh, thanks, Nat. <laughs> thanks for eating her. <laughs> okay. Here's what's on tap tonight. We're about to get into the good news. Then we have two <clears throat> separate sections. Uh, quip! Uh, stop nutting and chat. Uh, we have uh, Giddy Up Yeehaw Edition. And then we have the Giddy Up Nay Nay Edition. And then at the end, we have Wanted. And it's literally all the ponies. So that's what we've got crack a lacking today. Wow, I love your itinerary. That's oh, cute. Oh, thank you. Yes. It's also very festive. It, it Kirsten looks... will be the cruise director for our <laughs> journey today. <laughs> Please ensure that all belongings have been strapped in. <laughs> <laughs> Keep all hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. Please notice all of the exit signs have been eliminated because you cannot escape. <laughs> that anyway. includes... Keep your butthole on. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Oh, uh, and this is the good news. Uh, right. So, I got it. Yeah. Okay. I'm on it. I got it. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> All right. If, yes. Okay. Let's see how much hair I can get in my mouth during this whole thing. <laughs> that okay. sounds very interesting, Blair. <laughs> Would you like to elaborate? <laughs> tail. <laughs> tail. She's got tail in her mouth. <laughs> I can't come here at all, ever. <laughs> Sounds Every like time. A hostage situation. It is a hostage situation. <laughs> I'm literally being held captive. Okay. We, we will not be hitting the gritty though. This is giddy, not gritty. Um first of all, as a millennial woman, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do a tutorial at the end. <laughs> don't worry, I got you. <laughs> My knowledge stopped at like the dab, and that was it. She, After that, she unclear. Gwidoey ain't even gwidoing. <laughs> Whittly. Whittly. Okay. Sorry. All right. I think Jinx has settled down. All right. Oh, I've heard about this. Okay. Oh. Do you want me to say something <laughs> else? No. Okay. I mean, I can tell you good news about my day instead. <laughs> right. You know what? Screw the good news. <laughs> well, we'll go back to our Dune conversation. Oh my god. No, we get this is this is a Dune Dune 2 <laughs> recap podcast right now. No 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 Oilers in chat. So what happened was No, you can't spoil it. <laughs> we open on the desert dunes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the song is. <laughs> and they <laughs> I think that's what it sounds like. I was so happy you were doing that. <laughs> Dune 2 was really good. We were literally actually just talking about it <laughs> right before we started. We were talking about how the nephew oh looks like uh, Lex Luthor and the Sith Lord had a baby. <laughs> Which is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying right now. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. I think they made a mistake by not contacting me for their theme music. <laughs> no, we are not good. <laughs> 
It's literally been 30 minutes that we've had time to get our shit together. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Oh my god. Sandworms and dreams of genocide. <laughs> Just in very minor. <laughs> minor concerns. <sighs> anyway. <coughs> <sighs> <laughs> if you can't fill your Thursday with joy, <laughs> 11 minutes in and we have literal tears. The player is literally crying. <laughs> oh, can't breathe. Okay. Are you, are you okay? I I think so. That was the hardest I've ever laughed in my whole life. Just so you know. <laughs> your whole existence <laughs> came down to the sandworm music. <laughs> Would you like to drink some sandworm juice? No. That stuff looks like blue Powerade, though, <laughs> low-key. <laughs> Yo, you got that blue drink. I would love some right. of that. Oh, my God. If you're, in a, if you're stranded in a desert and something even minorly looks like Powerade, I'm going to hit that. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just saying. It looks appetizing. Absolutely. It could, it could have looked a lot worse. It could. I was expecting it to not actually I'm gonna be honest I don't know what I expected when they just down into yeah. the worm mm -hmm. it wasn't yeah. that I can be honest no say it wasn't I, that. I was expecting like blood or yeah. you know some, I don't know some like green gunk or something yeah yeah well that's me never drinking Powerade again <laughs> you're welcome worm juice <clears throat> <sighs> So anyway, this dog. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, all right. So <laughs> this is about a dog, um, and he is a the type of dog is an Akita dog. His name is Hero, and he saved his owner's life last week in an incredible tale of loyalty and resilience that saw him remain by his side. <laughs> Sorry, I have the giggles now because <laughs> it's, it's too much. All Are right, sing the song again. No. <laughs> I can do it just for you. <laughs> no. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Crow? Oh, I'm feeling it now. <laughs> feeling like a total barnacle head. <laughs> okay. So the dog remained by his side through two frigid Alberta nights to fend off coyotes and eventually alert rescuers. So this is a lovely dog. We love this dog. He's so cute. Um, winning plaudits. I've never heard of that word before. Me neither. Um, for his name and deed um, the world over. Are you? Mm, okay. A GoFundMe raised $3,000 to cover the veterinary bills of Hero by the shelter that is keeping him safe and warm while his owner recovers. Uh, the story began when an attack, with an attack, that when a passerby named Curtis Dahl was walking in a field of mud and grass near the sugar factory in the town of Tabor, a hero came running up and bit his dog around the neck. Dahl claims he tussled with hero for 10 minutes trying to get him off his dog and needed stitches on his finger by the end of it. Calling police and animal services with a complaint, he alerted them to hero's presence, but when the officers arrived and saw Hero lying down exhausted near a terrace plot of grass and weeds near, near the road, they suddenly heard a cry for help. Arriving, they, fa they found a 61-year-old man on his back in a ditch, shivering and unable to move. He told police he'd been stuck there for two days while Hero protected him. While the man was taken to the hospital, Hero was taken to the Tabor Lost Paws Society, an animal shelter that has been has a special program to look after dogs during periods of crisis or injury. As it happened, the society's acting president, Alana McPhee said that they had an employee who was the injured man's neighbor and knew he had another Akita dog named Tora. Adorable. So cute. So cute. We love that. What a goodest boy. And that's honestly, the, that's all the good news. <laughs> The bestest boy. We love it. The bestest boy. Uh, so that's the good news. Lex Luthor asking his son if he would like a jelly bean before <laughs> throat stopping by his angsty son. <laughs> so true. Didn't that other guy get like kicked in the face? It's the Guardian of the Galaxy guy. 
Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, that is correct. Yeah. He got <clears throat> freaking manhandled. Puma he circling. Did. Hello? Hello? Okay. I'm just gonna overthink it while we uh, get into our nay nay section. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, we're going to stick with the theme of animals because we're going to talk about the horse lineage. We're going to talk about America's Cowboys. And at the end, I do have beautiful, pretty pony pictures for all of us to enjoy and look through. There are so many. So uh, they've kind of been grouped together because uh, how? There's too many. There's too many different types. Um, But we'll also talk about the difference between a pony and a horse, as well as the difference between a breed and coloration. Some of them are the same. Some of them. I would just like to clarify Uh that I call all the horses ponies. Okay. As a term of endearment (laughs) towards them. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That is all ponies. Got it. Just so everyone's aware, that's that is what we're going with right now. It's honestly fair. Yeah. So the beginnings, if we shall uh, call them, I guess, it's, it's like sort of the beginning. So at this time, the majority of the horses that were roaming were significantly different, as you can see from this photo, uh, than what you see today, not just in size, colors, shapes, and textures, but also just where they were throughout the world. This horse that you see here is no longer represented in our current breed structure. Today's horses... So it's an ancient horse. Correct. Today's horses only represent just like, if even a smidge of what this previous lineage was. And all the other branches of the horse family known as Equidae are now extinct from these older generations. The earliest known horses evolved 55 million years ago, and for much of this time, multiple horse species lived at the same time, often seen side by side, as seen here. Cute. Yeah. Uh, Some 10 million years ago, up to a dozen species of horses roamed the Great Plains of North America, and these relatives of the modern horse came, of course, in those shapes and sizes that varied very greatly. Some lived in the forest, others preferred open grassland, etc. And here, uh, on this other slide, these are the, um, these two. These are the Dinohippus horses, which can be seen grazing on the grasses like the horses we know today. However, unlike modern horses, a three-toed Hypohippus tiptoes through the forest and they nibble on leaves. So even their toe structure, you can kind of see oh. it here yeah is different cute and also for anybody who doesn't know this is pretty accurate because if you look at a horse's skeleton their hoof is kind of like all of your it's like they're standing on a singular toe (laughs) right just just for reference so but the the hoof part is more like a toenail situation right yes so that's why when you get like the farrier that comes in and trims them it doesn't hurt them because it's just like you're it's like cutting your fingernails but that's why this toe situation kind of makes sense um because it just essentially fused together kind of like a flipper on a dolphin or something moose be like watch me whip watch me nay nay <laughs> nay nay so true are zebras just prison horses a thousand percent uh there's also the three-toed nanopus which made me chuckle <laughs> um and again they had these uh three toes uh like this one does here and there are several other mammals that were alive of course that were relatives of other animals such as the camel which was the procamelus um the gomphotherium which was a distant relative of true elephants i don't know what false elephants are and then (laughs) teleoceros which was a hornless rhino at the time cute yeah sure And this is kind of like a broader picture of all the different types. So you can see this one here has the three toes, the bottom one, and this guy does. And then as the lineage gets closer and closer to what you might think of now as more of a horse, you'll start to see that the hoof is fully forming and no longer into those individual digits. Um, 
So, uh, by 55 million years ago, the first members of the horse family, the dog size Hyracotherium, were scampering through the forests that covered North America as well. For more than half their history, most horses remained small, so like this bottom guy right here, and they were mostly found in the forest. But, of course, climate changed and conditions changed, which allowed for more grasslands to expand. And about mm -hmm. 20 million years ago, there were many new species rapidly evolving. Um, and some, but not all, of course, became large and had that familiar hoof and grazing diet that we now associate, which is probably closer to these top guys uh, in the photo. And only these species survived to the present. But of course, in the past, small and large species lived side by side. So you're not going to see like these bottom guys. You, anything that was coming into modern era are going to be more akin to these two at the top. Right. Has anyone seen a mountain chicken? I have not. <laughs> So if we're talking about sizes, horses were once much smaller, like we talked about. Now they uh, kind of have tons of sizes. I mean, you can think of like the biggest draft horse to like a mini pony, really. So Lil Sebastian. Yeah, they still have like a wide range of sizes. Um, the little Nanopus shown in the diorama previously at full adult was actually smaller than even its predecessors. So the Mesohippus was 45 kilograms. The Mary Chippus was 100 kilograms. And the Nanopus came in at 75 kilograms. And the Equus was 500 kilograms. And then the Donna Hippus, which were part of that, the two at the beginning on the first slide. Mm -hmm. Their attributes included being the single hoof, eating grass, and they were that 11 to 4 million years ago range. And this is the closest relative, like we said, to what we yeah. have today. So. Nice. And so today, very few horses are found in the wild. If you've never been, this is actually a photo from the Chicoteague ponies that come through. Um, it's something in the, <clears throat> in North America on the East Coast. You can see the Chicoteague ponies. It's, it's cool. It is cool. Um, they're very pretty, but they're wild. So it's not like people are just jumping on their backs. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Um, but the majority of them do just kind of live with people. We obviously feed and ride and breed and shelter, all those things. Um, and they've been domesticated for a very long time, potentially more than 5,000 years at this point. Prehistoric remains show that at the end of the Ice Age, some 10,000 years ago, wild horses died out in the Americas and dwindled in Western Europe for reasons that are not clear. But they thrived on the steppes of Eastern Europe and Central Asia, where short grasses and shrubs grow on vast, dry stretches of land. And most scholars believe it was here that people domesticated them, forming the bond that we currently know. Yeah. The close relationship between horses and humans has, of course, changed us both. Um, we've essentially remade the, the generational structure of horses in the breeds because, like I said, they were they died out. And so as they traveled and bred and intermingled with other species that were still there, of course, what happens, you create new breeds and new spinoffs. And that's just how it goes. Like dogs. Yeah, kind of. exactly. Like, like dogs. Yep. <clears throat> so now the all important question, horses versus ponies. If you're Blair, there isn't one. But if you're no. like everyone else, <laughs> the actually is a difference. And it's mostly down to their height. So a pony will measure between 14... Oh, also, I should say, horses are measured in hands. It's a different unit of measurement. So as opposed to feet. Yes, as opposed <laughs> to feet. Quite literally. They are measured in hands. <laughs> but doesn't it... It has to do with the amount of people it takes to take care of it, right? Or something like that? Or not really? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I, I don't remember. But it's it's a different unit of measurement. Um, so... A pony will measure uh, measure below 14.2 hands at maturity, which is around six to seven years old for a mini for like a pony. Uh, but a horse will, of course, be above that at maturity, which is around seven to eight years old. And you can see the picture here on the left is a pony and on the right is a horse. Even though it's a smaller horse, it's still larger than the pony will be ever in its entire life. <laughs> True. There are other things, though. Ponies usually have a longer back in comparison to their height. They have straighter shoulders, um, so they kind of have what's called a choppy trot, <laughs> which is very cute and very accurate. 
<laughs> um, short cannon bones, and this is a section of the lower leg directly below the knee or hock area. So this area here that looks like a knee, it's their hock. So that's hmm. where the cannon bone is. And then smaller hooves, of course, because they smell. And then smell. a horse is exactly the, the opposite of all of that. So they are more proportional in terms of length and height. Shoulders have more of a slope. They have smoother movements. So if you look at a pony trotting versus a horse trotting, you'll see the difference. And then, of course, it's attributed to those longer cannon bones and their leggies. I also heard that ponies are, like, meaner than regular horses. They can be. It's like the short short syndrome or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It is pretty accurate. And also, yeah. I've noticed the smaller the horse, even, the, the more aggressive. The meaner they are. <laughs> the meaner they are. It's very wow. weird. Wow. Mm. All I can remember is Zip at uh, Sweetbriar, actually. And every time I would try to just freaking dry brush him, he would want to whip around and try to bite the crap out of my butt. Anyway, mm. I hated mm. that horse, honestly. Yeah. No I remember one time Savannah came back to the room and she had like a huge hoof print like on her leg. Mm -hmm. And I was like, girlfriend, Don't even ask. what is going on? Yeah. And then the year I got kicked, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. That was junior year. Was it happens. For a week. It, it does happen. Uh, Jet... You're a jerk for kicking me in the arm. Anyway, so it, it does matter. <laughs> yeah. So size matters. So breeds and coloration. I just wanted to go over this because when we see the actual pictures of the horses, it may be a little confusing because there are lots of different horse breeds, but across these different breeds, they also have like, you can have a bay in many breeds which is this color. Oh, interesting. And you I can did not have, know this. Yes. Okay. And you can <clears throat> have a gray in multiple breeds. Sure. Interestingly enough, you can also have an Appaloosa color pattern and also an Appaloosa is a breed. Right. Because that's not confusing. Right. At all. Correct. <laughs> so anyway, hmm. so uh, the most common color palettes are Appaloosa, Bay, Chestnut and Sorrel, Gray, Black, Rowan, Palomino, Buckskin, Dun, and Pinto. But then, of course, as you can see here, you would also have different variations. So if you're a Bay, that's great. But you might also be a Blood Bay, a Dark Bay, a Black Bay, or a regular Chestnut or a Liver Chestnut. It just depends mm. on the shade that you are. What is... So there's one that's um, Flea Bitten, which yes. I feel bad for. But I hate that that's like a color. Well, it's because it's not... It's like the Dapple... Okay, but, but it's less, just lighter. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're mm -hmm. lighter gray spots, and then you'll also see like they don't have dark legs like the dapple does. Right. Yeah. But it does. Okay. It looks like little bite marks. That's why it's called flea bit. Oh, yeah. cute. Because they're very light. So kind of like a blue tick dog, right. exactly sort that. of. Okay. Exactly All right. that. Yep. And then um, there's something else I wanted to mention. Uh, oh, also it. You can have the same colorations in ponies as well. So it, they're all horses shown here, but you can have a, a bay pony, a gray pony, etc. Right. <clears throat> so but you'll see that. So anyway, I just want to make sure everybody knows. Okay. Got it. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Blair for our yeehaw section. This is where we're going to like talk it. about the history of cowboys. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> so in uh, 1519, shortly after the Spanish arrived in the Americas, they began to build ranches to raise cattle and other livestock. Horses were imported from Spain and put to work on ranches. In Mexico's native cowboys were called vequeros, which comes from the Spanish word vaca, which is cow. Uh, the Cueros were hired by ranchers to tend to livestock and were known for their superior roping, riding, and herding skills. Yeehaw. By the early 1700s, ranching made its way to present-day Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and as far south as Argentina. When the California mission started in 1769, livestock practices were introduced to more areas in the West. 
And during the early 1800s, many English speaking settlers migrated to the West and adopted aspects of the Vaquero culture, um, including their clothing style and cattle driving methods. Cowboys came from diverse backgrounds, including African Americans, Native Americans, Mexicans, and settlers from the Eastern United States and Europe. So, but it sounds like we got most of our influences from mm -hmm. the Mexican cowboys. A hundred percent. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So Manifest Destiny and American Cowboys. Every This is the classic, is. like everybody thinks of when you see, <laughs> you know, a Western movie from the 70s or whatever. It's very so, accurate. <laughs> in the mid 1800s, the United States built railroads that reached further west and cowboys played a culture or central part in the nation's quote manifest destiny as a west as westward expansion led to an ever shifting frontier cowboys herded and rounded up livestock that were transported by rail around the country for sale and to distinguish what a cowboy what cattle belonged to which ranch cowboys would brand the animals um, by burning a special mark into their hides and it took between eight and 12 cowboys to move 3,000 head of cattle along ca cattle drives. Can I also, I'm just going to add this in there now. Yeah. There is a lot of, shall we say, ethical uh, debate regarding the branding situation. Sure. I would like to say that when it comes to uh, modern techniques, some still use the stereotypical branding, but there are many who have transitioned to cold branding, which doesn't hurt. Hmm. <laughs> so that's good. And it still leaves the permanent mark on the animal so that you know whose is whose. Well, and then there's the ear tags too. Yep. So for cows, they typically have the ear tags. Horses, not so much. So if you're yeah. going to brand them, you probably have to have a method that was, you know, like yeah. the ice branding. But yeah, definitely you can number uh, any of the livestock you have. But just to... I know it's controversial, so I just wanted to add sure. that in there. Yeah, <laughs> they no now problem. use more modern methods. PETA, if you're listening, yeah. we're talking to you. <laughs> just want to be very clear: we are not endorsing that. And I just wanted to say it's that it's just part of the history. It's just part Calm of the history. Down. <laughs> My gosh, I know. go watch Yellowstone or something and yell at them. <laughs> exactly. I prefer um, spaghetti western. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so. Also, I this is side note about cows. Yeah. I have found myself on cow hoof TikTok. Okay. Where everybody's like uh cleaning off the cow hooves and horse hoofs too, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's so fun to like watch them get their toenails trimmed and mm -hmm. all manicured up. It's very nice. When you're anyway. doing it yourself, it's significantly less fun, I can say for certain. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not out here trying to do that, but I like watching other people do it. Absolutely. Have you seen the shoe fittings? I have. Oh, it's very fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. It's yeah, a nice little steam. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it again does not hurt the animal. <laughs> right. Because they basically just have a large toenail on their foot <laughs> no and it does not hurt them at all. Was right. Harmed. In fact, one thing that it prevents is things that can harm the animal, like abscesses. Anyway. Right. Well, and I, I, so when I first saw this, it looked kind of weird. And I immediately texted Savannah and Sienna. And yeah. I was like, so what's the deal with this? Because yeah. I need to know, is this painful for them? And Sienna was like, absolutely not. Dr. So. Pimpa Popper? Yeah, I bet. Do you? Do you no, I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't seek her out specifically, right. but if it comes up on my page, like, obviously I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Um, all right. So open range versus barbed wire. By the time the Civil War ended in 1865, the Union Army had largely used up the supply of beef in the north. Increasing the demand for beef, obviously. Where's the beef? Unclear. Uh, the expansion <laughs> of the meatpacking industry also... <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i said trick <laughs> can you tell what we're talking about <laughs> oh my gosh sorry <laughs> kirsten got really excited and, very, and she's dying now oh sorry go ahead um so the expansion of the meat packing industry also encouraged consumption of beef by 1866 millions of heads of longhorn cattle were rounded up and driven toward railroad depots Cattle were also sold to northern markets for as much as $40 per head. And in 1865, that's 
a lot of money. A lot of money. Don't ask me to do the conversion, but there oh, is Oh, can I do it? I'm going to oh, do yeah, it. for sure. Okay. I'm going to do it really That's quick. fine. Everybody hold. Listen to the nice music. It's kind of putting me to sleep, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I can't hear it, so I hope it's good. <laughs> it is so good. What is the fountain chain? A regular in chat? That's Dawson is savage. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter, a regular at last. <laughs> Anybody seen Hairspray? That's what that line is from. I really like that line. <laughs> that's what John Travolta says. <laughs> she, that's like the most obscure line from that show. <laughs> this guy, think about it because of the way that he says it. And I say a regular. it to my, at least. I at say least. it to myself when I can buy a large instead of an extra large t-shirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> my, my little girl, a regular at last. <laughs> okay, so I couldn't find one that goes all the way back to what, what date was it? It was like 1890s? 1865. Yeah. 1865. So the one, so let's just put it this way. $40 in 1913 is $1,200 today. That's extreme! So. FYI. Yeah, Blair's gonna drink the juice. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so let's see, uh, ranching continued to be widespread through the late 1800s. Settlers were permitted to claim public lands on the Great Plains as quote, open range to rage purchased cattle or to rage purchased cattle. But in the 1890s, uh, most of the land became privatized after feuds over land <laughs> ownership were settled Everybody and used... <laughs> <laughs> we need like a, the recording of that and every time we'll just play it oh <laughs> i feel like she got tos i said nah you can't show that cat on here <laughs> he got rid of his fancy bottle <laughs> oh we're back now You're okay back. good cool all right <laughs> Um, okay, so by the 1890s, most land became privatized, yada yada. Everybody used barbed wire to keep everybody else out of their property. Um, during the winter of 1886 and 1887, thousands of cattle died when the temperatures reached well below freezing in parts of the West. Many scholars believed that this devastating winter was the beginning of the end for the cowboy era. <laughs> Brief pause while Jinx gets it together. <laughs> Take your time. Cattle, son. <laughs> cattle drives <laughs> continued, but on a smaller scale up until the night, the mid 1900s, most cowboys gave up the open trail life and were hired by private ranch owners in the West. <laughs> yeah, there's lots to know about horses, and in fact. The reason that we're talking about cowboys is because of how influential horses were, because that was their main transportation, of course. And even getting around the range wasn't the problem. It was often putting the cattle in an area or moving them around the, the, the farms that they had. And that's still right. accurate today for most. But sometimes in Yellowstone, in Yellowstone, they use cowboys, but they also use a helicopter, which I think is very cool. <laughs> As one does. Um. Even though the cowboy's role began to decline in the 1920s, Hollywood was like, we can capitalize on this. As usual. <laughs> um, and popularized the cowboy lifestyle with westerns from the 1920s to the 1940s. These films featured stars like John Wayne, the most famous cowboy, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, Buck Jones and Gene Autry. Uh, American audiences tuned in to see the fictional adventures of the Lone Ranger and Tonto. <laughs> my dad my dad had a friend who had a horse and his name was Tonto. <laughs> nice. Nice. My dad's like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um Will Kane in the in High Noon and Hop Along Cassidy on screen. Comic book fans could reach out about the Black Rider and Kid Cult. So that's fun. Um also, Abby, to your quest to your comment regarding donkeys. I would also like to make it very clear that horses and ponies are like in one area, donkeys are in another area, mules are in another area, zebras, etc. Even though they all came from the same lineage, they are all different. 
So it makes sense that you would have preferences. So you prefer ass. <laughs> no. <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> Donkeys are adorable. They are. All right. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. Cowboy life. Uh, cowboys were mostly young men who needed cash. Seems fair. Yeah. The average cowboy in the West made about $25 to $40 a month. In addition to herding cattle, they also helped care for horses, repaired fences and buildings, worked cattle drives, and in some cases helped establish frontier towns. Cowboys occasionally developed a bad reputation for being lawless and were banned from certain establishments. Shocker. <laughs> right. Um, they typically wore large hats with wide brims to protect them from the sun, boots to help them ride horses, and bandanas to guard them from dust. Some wore chaps on the outside of their trousers to protect their legs from sharp cactus needles and rocky terrain. When they lived on the ranch, cowboys shared a bunkhouse with each other and for entertainment sang songs, played guitar or harmonica, and wrote poetry. I highly doubt they wrote poetry. I think that's a lie. <laughs> think that's, I think you made some of those up. <laughs> I think you made it up. Um, cowboys were referenced or referred to, excuse me, as cow pokes buckaroos cow hands and cow punchers rude. which is rude <laughs> the most experienced cowboy was called a uh, segundo um spanish for second and rode squarely with the you, right now <laughs> no <laughs> rode squarely with the trail boss it's okay jinx this is your show <laughs> Your world. We're just living in it. That's right. Uh, work days last about 15 hours and much of the time was spent on a horse or doing other physical labor. Rodeo cowboys. Some cowboys, they tested their skills and they hurt themselves, most likely. <laughs> um, <Facts>. By <laughs> uh, rodeo activities included bull riding, calf roping, steer wrestling, bareback bronco riding and barrel racing can i just tell you that when we first moved here so first of all on our ride out here yes. we visited cat and her fiance in south dakota mm -hmm. and for those who don't know cat which is everyone except kirsten um <laughs> she yes. is a large animal veterinarian and her fiance her fiance's dad owns cattle i believe or something like that mm -hmm. Anyway, her fiance, I guess, used to do like the rodeo circuit. And um, so he told us like, hey, you need to go to the Salinas Rodeo, which is near us. Mm -hmm. So um, we were like, OK, sure. When I tell you that it was a lovely time <laughs> and also there like we were very concerned because there's this event called mutton racing i believe it is and they take children put the helmet on them and then strap them to the back of a sheep and they yep let them run around isn't that wonderful? and it's the best such freedom much yeah wow. yeah i have to tell you that when tyler was younger um he said once and I mean singular once mm -hmm. he told his mom he wanted to be a rodeo cowboy. She had a fit and told everyone in the family and everyone was calling him going, you're throwing your life away. That is so dangerous. And it like blew up. And so for the rest of his like young life, everyone was just mm -hmm. like, you remember that time that you like freaked everyone out because you wanted to be a cowboy? And he's like, I said that once as a child. <laughs> And they just took it wow. and ran with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm. it seems like it was effective. <laughs> For reference, he is not a rodeo cowboy today. <laughs> right. Sir. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it it definitely was effective. Yeah. <laughs> um, But yeah, it's. I mean, it's the fun. first profession, the first professional rodeo was held in Prescott, Arizona in 1888. Since then, rodeos became and continue to be popular entertainment events in the United States, Mexico, and elsewhere. We've been to the professional bull riding before as well. That was really yes. fun. Yes. I actually yeah. went in high school with some friends ah, because so we fun. thought it would be fun. <laughs> that is fun. And it is fun. Yeah. All right. Cowboys and cowgirls. 
uh, in the modern age. Over the years, the number of working cowboys has declined. Obviously, we have tools for this now. For sure. Um, but the occupation isn't obsolete. The cowboy lifestyle and culture is still found in certain areas of the United States. Shockingly, in California, which is like the least place that I would think that it would be. There's a lot of land there, though. There is. Yeah, yeah no, totally. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of farming, agriculture, yeah. that kind of stuff. So like, it makes sense, but like, but also... not my first choice. <laughs> no, <laughs> me right? neither. Um, so the cowboy lifestyle and culture still found in the United States, lesser degree than previously. Um, cowboys continue to help run large ranches in states like Texas, Utah, Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. Um, according to the U S Bureau of labor statistics in 2003, there were about 9,730 workers in the category support activities for animal production, <laughs> AKA cowboys. <laughs> cowboys. These workers made an average of $19,340 a year. Uh, while opportunities may have shifted, the American cowboy is still very much a part of the American West. Hee-haw. The hee-haw. <laughs> also pretty accurate quip, <laughs> especially these days. And now, do, 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 do. it is the wanted time where i show you all the beautiful ponies and we discuss all of the breeds you get to see all the different color variations and patterns it's super pretty but strap in because there's literally like 80 of these things and it took me a really long time to put it all together so enjoy okay also these are not just american breeds these span these are all breeds that i could possibly muster and find and they're in alphabetical order so you're welcome so the first group includes these guys. American cream dress. I know. Wait till so you cute. wait till you see I'm not even gonna say it. I'm gonna okay. wait. I'm gonna wait till we get to okay. the slide and then I'm just gonna wait for you to see it. Okay. I mean honestly that one looks like the Barbie horse. Which right? one? The American the oh, second one. The cream American draft. cream yeah. draft, yeah. Now and and it's an American cream draft, so it's this creamy color, but I would also like to point out that these guys over here on the right, the American Quarter Horse and the Arabian, mm -hmm. you'll see that they kind of look pretty similar. We got, uh, you know, a bay and a chestnut here, but they could also have a bay Arabian or a chestnut Quarter Horse or, a, or uh, you know, this color palette, but a Quarter Horse. It's a, it just... Sure just wanted yeah. to say that and then this is the appaloosa here which is both a color and the a dalmatian breed. horse the dalmatian horse which also has a color pattern over here for the american sugar bush so just wanted to make sure that you see yeah. that yeah i like it uh and also on this page we do have a mini this is the american mini horse how cute adorable i want a mini horse i know they're so cute same they, they will mm -hmm. kick you in the crotch just keep that in mind <laughs> with reckless abandon um, but yeah, I would say on this page, the most popular ones that are probably like the ones you would have heard of are the mini, the paint, think of spirited away, uh, not spirited mm. away, spirit, I'm sorry. Spirit, spirit. stallion yes. of this, of the, of the, yeah, something. This I don't is, know. It, it was a good movie though. It was a great movie. This mm -hmm. is the female horse love interest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else you want me to say. Love, love that. <laughs> Thank you for putting it in terms that I can understand. I just wanted to make sure you knew. Uh, also, the quarter horse is probably the most common that you will see in most barns, especially the larger ones. Like at Sweetbriar, they mostly had quarter horses. Uh, Andalusian, Appaloosa, Arabian, beautiful. Here's our second group. Now, one that you might not have heard of is the... Bajau Pony. It is a pony, but I also included the photo where they're all dressed up. So these horses are used in, um, I forget which country and I should have put it down, but they have ceremonial garbs that they will put and do different demonstrations in their culture or tradition with their ponies, which is super cute. Um, but I don't know specifically what kind of tradition they do. Uh, and then for our beautiful UK watchers, we have a couple of British babies. The British Appaloosa, which does look a little similar to what we have, but it is a little different. So she's really beautiful. But then if we come back over here, you can see it's got a little bit of like a structure difference in the head. 
just very different, uh, varied differences there. We also have the British riding pony, which is like super weirdly stocky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And then the Ooh, do you have pony. Clydesdales in here? They're my fave. I don't have Clydesdales in here. Mm, okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> but Clydesdales. I'll forgive you this one time. Clydesdales are a draft horse. So, and we do have a couple of drafts in here. Yeah. So you'll see those. Um, the weirdest horse on this page for me is the freaking spooky one in the middle. Why does he look so horrified? What is going on? Which one? <laughs> this one. I don't know. The one I that's can't, staring at me. I can't. The first of all, you know that I can't <laughs> see you doing. And like, there's a delay on the feed. There so, is. like, mm. uh, the Camarillo White Horse. Oh, that one looks albino, honestly. It does look albino. Totally mm-hmm. see them often in the UK. Really? Do you actually? Or are you just saying that? <laughs> uh, so, anyway, these are cute. Love to see it. Also, you'll see. Sorry. Um, Ooh. For the blazer. Ooh. What? I skipped ahead. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for the blazer here in the middle, you will see like this little heart design. Um, sometimes they will brand them like this. Also, sometimes the owner will just literally trim the hair in that area. <laughs> no, I don't see them a lot. Ridiculous, Abby. <laughs> All right. Next group. We got a couple more ponies on this slide, and you'll see a lot of them are super fluffy. <laughs> The curly horse is so cute, and I did not know that existed until just now. I also just want... To, this is the page where I'm just going to let you see it. It's so cute. It's not even the pony, unfortunately. It's 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 sadder what? than that. <laughs> what? Do you see the Florida cracker horse? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> when I saw the name of that horse, I cracked up so hard. <laughs> I was like... I feel of course, like it's talk- from Florida. <laughs> I feel like you're talking about me, and that's not very nice. Also, there's super like short haircut on this particular one. He he has like the the he old has like a mohawk or cut. something. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> mm-hmm. Um, but yes, horse equivalent of a buzz cut. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So lots of different. Yes, there is a curly horse. Their texture is very cool to look at. Um, I want to touch it. I want to touch the Exmoor pony. Oh, yeah. A thousand percent. And then one that you'll probably have heard of quite a bit is actually the Frisian. That's a very popular breed. I have a field yeah. that has two horses and they're common breeds. Yeah. Yeah. But the yeah. Frisians you'll probably have heard of. They got the long flowing hair. Beautiful. <clears throat> There's also a variation of the Frisian. There's a Frisian heritage, which is just a little bit different. So they're showcased here. Um, the Icelandic... <laughs> <laughs> the picture of the Carrie Bog pony. <laughs> it's very weird. He's not having a good day. <laughs> um, he is not. Also, your Clydesdale is my Gypsy Vanner. These were my oh, favorite yeah. horses growing up. Um, they're just so beautiful. And they're also kind of like in that draft. So they got the fluffy feet. They're mm-hmm. big. They're stocky draft kind of structure. Yeah. Long flowing hair and tail. Very mm-hmm. gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a couple of uh, European ones on here as well. Got the Irish cob, the Irish draught, and the Irish sport horse, which looks spooky as heck. <laughs> <laughs> the Icelandic the looks Irish- like it's one. <laughs> it's got a little smile too, so it's just like, <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> he knows all. <laughs> um, I also like how the Georgian Grand also is very upset about something. <laughs> That horse. <laughs> what is the movie? I'm trying to think. I believe. Oh shoot. I believe it's Aristocats that has like no, it's not. There's like a black and white. Oh no, it's Mulan. Mulan uh, yes. has that's Mulan's horse right there. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so scared. I don't know what of. Uh, it, on okay, so on the next page, I want you to take a look at Mountain Pleasure Horse and also look at the worried expression. <laughs> Why are they always so worried? (laughs) (laughs) It looks like he's just received really bad news. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I was so I was on TikTok. This was a while ago and it was I am. This is crazy. Okay, so as we all can see, horses have eyes on the sides of their head. Right. Mm -hmm. So they can't see 
like they can see forward, but it's not like the same. But if you put the blinders on them, they really can't see, right? Yeah. And so that's how we control mm -hmm. the horses in like a very crowded environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that we were just basically blinding horses <laughs> so that we can manage them better. We're not blinding horses, first of all. We are trying to prevent the spookage as much as possible. Right. I would like to return your attention to the Georgia Grand. <laughs> and you tell me who needs the blinders. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong okay you're not wrong <laughs> so yes his little ears i know so i cute. know <laughs> it's oh like God. if a doberman was a horse <laughs> right right no exactly oh my god but on this page um one of the more common breeds that you might have heard of is the morgan horse it's also it's it's pretty common out there I can be 100% honest and say I have never... The only horse breeds that I knew off the top of my head before we talked about this, mm -hmm. Quarter Horse, Perfect. Clydesdale. Perfect. That's it. That's really all That's you all need all to That's all I got. Know. Yeah. <laughs> this, is all, this is all extra. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next group. Very lovely. There's also a Quarter The Norwegian horse. Fjord. <laughs> yes. Oh. Isn't he cute? He's um, so cute. And I personally really like the Rocky Mountain horse. Uh, he looks very He's got exotic. emo bangs. Oh, yes, of course. The Norwegian. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I apologize. No, that's the perfect one. He's literally so cute. And actually, a lot of their... If you look at this horse and others that are similar to it in its uh, grouping, mm -hmm. um, they do patterns because in their hair... You'll see right here at the back and the front how it has like the darker brown. If you yeah. cut it in a pattern, you can actually see the different colors and it creates oh, contrast. In that's their fun. It's very oh, I cool. love that. Yeah. It's like natural highlights. Correct. <laughs> exactly. I love that for him. Maybe he's barn with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We need to go home. We're, this, is, this is not good. Saddle up. Let's go home. We're done here. We're almost done. I promise. Uh, You're so, welcome. On this page, Tyler actually grew up working with the Tennessee Walking Horse. Those were all the horses that they had. And they are called the Tennessee Walking Horse. And if you could look up a video... Um, because of the way that they walk um, and the way they're trained to walk. <laughs> and there's nothing extra grand about it. It's just a specific mm. walk that is trademarked to this horse. Okay. There's also a Shire, which is also pretty common. You might have heard of it at least. It's similar to like, again, a Clydesdale, a Gypsy Banner. They've got the stocky feet that have the floofies on them. Not to be confused with the Shire that Frodo was in Correct. before he went to go find the ring. Shire location, Shire horse. Right. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also the Sumba horse, which similar to the other one is clearly dressed up here in a very traditional ceremonial kind of way. So it's not like show horses and um, jumping and, you know, spectacular things with horses is unique to the United States in any way. There are obviously other cultures that have traditional ways of training their horses to do these very ritualistic functions in their culture. So it's really cool to see something different. And then the last four, uh, you have these guys. I like the Wakalooza. And that's all I have to say. About yeah. Page. That's good. Yeah. I like it. And thus concludes our horse episode, actually. That's all I had. Good job. I like it. No, yeah. Yeah. Some good stuff. I did ride horses, of course. Not nearly as much as uh, some of our friends, necessarily, but yeah. 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 I worked for a nonprofit horse community that worked with um, special needs kids and troubled teens in the area, and we would volunteer over there to take care of the horses, and at the time... Because I was trying at the moment, it was a very small moment, to do pre-med for vet stuff. Uh, I did my internship over there, 
and saw a castration for the first time, thought I was going to vomit, and then decided I wasn't vet material, which is very fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Kat's sending me pictures of newborn calves all over the place. And I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, can I please get right some sort of, you know, warning, warning. before yeah. I get this? Yeah. yeah. Um, but <clears throat> while I was on the farm, we helped a lot of the kids. We groomed horses. I was part of the wound care group. So we would go out and, you know, we had a herd of like 30 horses and we've got lots of fences and trees. And so they just run into each other and other things. And you're like... I literally let you out this morning. How do you have this big gash in the side of your neck? That's great. And then um, I got to see them like float a horse's teeth and things like that. It was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Farrier stuff. It was very fun. And then we did competition riding, which was also very fun. So yeah. the horses I rode were Goose, Pal, Zip, Missy, and Ladybug. Cute. My favorite was Missy. She was a draft horse, but she was also a jerk. I regret not taking a riding class. I just never like did it. You should have. You would have. Had a lot I should have. I missed an opportunity, but I was also like trying to do five million other things. So I feel like you I know. mean, swimming literally took over your entire existence. It did, <laughs> but somehow Kirsten and Cat were able to take like beginner ride or Kirsten. And Caroline were able to take like beginner writing or something like that. Yeah, they did that. for a semester. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun until things got things got really weird there. And I think it was just for like spoiler for alert. Our, our junior year, our school tried to close, and there was a lot of aggression and drama there. And things were switching around, and finances were tough. So I feel like that was kind of the climate. Uh, yeah especially everything got weird yeah. quickly and never really returned yeah so so at that point things were weird but at the beginning it was great yeah it was a lot of fun and no i will not be showing pictures because ew don't worry guys i'll find them <laughs> i will post them actually i will if you ever find i will you... i will text chicken mom <laughs> mm -hmm. if you stalk me on facebook which feel free i guess it doesn't really matter. I do have photos of the past on there. So. The past. The past. I saw a post that was like 10 years ago and I almost vomited the other day. Anyway. Ugh, that's um, why I don't get on Facebook. <clears throat> <clears throat> I, I can't know. handle my middle school self. I just can't. <laughs> and uh, I don't know her anymore. <laughs> she is not is who she? I am. <laughs> yeah. On that note, I'm going to play our outro music. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, oh, I forgot to show. Hold on a second. I've now implemented this slide. Um, follow us on all our socials. Feel free. Yeah. I've listed them all out. Uh, obviously, we're here on Twitch. Go figure. We do have a Discord. I'm not very active on it. Sorry about that. Uh, but if you need any updates, you can go to my Discord over at She's the Moose. I do update there every so often. Yep. Uh, we are on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, of course, and Apple, which isn't listed here because I couldn't find the logo for it. But we are there, too. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we have episodes every other Literally, Tuesday, yeah. every Tuesday and this every other Thursday. We do a lot of updates on Instagram, too. So we if do. anything really is going down, go it's to there. Instagram and yes. that's where it'll be. Also, keep in mind, I just want to go ahead and say this because, you know, preemptively... Um, unfortunately, uh, Blair and I will be moving this summer, mm -hmm. so we need to pack and prepare ourselves. So following May, there will be, a, a hiatus of streams and potentially just no more here, just depending, cause we'll be in different time zones. So, I mean, we're in different time zones now, but we'll be in more different time zones when we move. Different. Yeah. So just wanted to say that after May, and we on hiatus over here, but we'll send out an announcement. So check out our Instagram, check out our TikTok. That's where you'll yep. find it. Rate us five stars. And we're going to try and do our best to like keep up with the pod. Yeah. On like audio <laughs> only, obviously, the yeah. best we can. Um, so do, just if you need, if you get, if you miss us, you can always go there. <laughs> and if you're happy about it, that's also fine. I yeah. will take it personally. Yeah. Anyway, have a beautiful night. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks, and uh, you'll hear our voices on Tuesday, I guess. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Get along, little doggy. No Western terms for you? Okay. 
No, I um, am waiting for the stream to turn off, and oh. then I will be oh. chatting. <laughs> oh, you're not even going to give them a country goodbye? Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, it wasn't that good. I'm sorry. You would just, you know, you could say y'all. Y'all. Yeehaw. Y'all. <laughs>